Hello everybody. In this video we are going to start looking at decision making and some boolean logic. In other words, we are going to start making decisions depending on the results of our code. So we start doing some conditionals in there. As you can see I already have my editor open, my web file. Let me create my condition.py and let me just watch it in order to run it. Oh, just to be running every time. And I have my cheat sheet open too. I have the Boolean logic section, I want to explain that a little bit. And what is different with the Boolean logic with the arithmetic logic? Well, arithmetic permits to assignment to change the value or make calculation of dependent value. Boolean logic, we have only two types of results true or false. That's it. What we're going to do is we're going to check some conditions, and depending on those conditions, it's going to give us a true or false. And we can actually cast it if we go to the conversion section through the volume. But we can actually see in the volume logic some of those conditions. And those conditions are using pretty much with comparisons. With the less than, greater than that, less or equal to that, greater or equal than, equal, not equal. Those are the symbols and those are the mathematic universe how they actually type it. But in a computer we need to type it like this. And we have the and and the or. And let's actually look a little bit how this actually works. Let's do x equal 3, y equal 5, and we can do print x less than y. It's going to be true. We know that 3 is less than 5. That's correct. If we do greater than that, it's going to be false. That's the result that we got. We can actually cast this result as integer. And we'll see that false is pretty much a 0. And true is pretty much a 1. That's actually how Boolean logic works. So you can actually have a numeric representation of that Boolean logic. Just to, uh, to let it read. Okay, that's another one. The equal sign. And that's really important. You need to have two equal signs in order to make a comparison to the something is equal to something else. And here's the difference. When you have an equal sign, you do an assignment. That means you're assigning the right part of the value to the less part. But when you have two equal signs, you are making a comparison and you're checking if x is equal to y. Let's do another assignment here. Let's do x equal y now. And let's print this again. We're going to do false and then true. Because we know in the beginning they are not equal. So what this is actually printing false. Then we make x equal to y, so we are assigning the y value. So x is now 3, is now 5, sorry. And when we compare that again, we have a true statement. This is how Boolean logic works. And Boolean logic works also with priority or draw parentheses. You can do, let's delete this over here. And let's have a equal 5 and b equal 9. So we can say x less than y is true. We can separate those in a the n open parenthesis again, we can say a is less than b. We have a true here. What is happening? The and tied up 
both comparisons. In order to end to get as a true, you need to have all the sections resolving as a true. In this case, x is less than 5, so this statement is true. A is less than B, so this statement is true. And because we are saying this one or this one and this one, both are true, we can have a true statement there. But if we have one statement false, we know that x is not bigger than y, the AND statement will resolve as a false, because one of the sides is actually false. It doesn't matter that a is still less than b. Let me show you that, save it, and we have false in there. But that is why we have the OR statement. We have the OR, it doesn't matter one or both of them. With the OR, you can say if this one is false and this one is true, resolve as true. It doesn't matter, it could be only one as a true. The only way if both are true, it still resolves as true. The only way that the OR will resolve a false is that all these sections actually false. If only one is true, it resolves as true. And this is the base logic how the condition statement work through the comparison symbols and through the and or keywords to verify that. Now that we have that section understand it somehow, let me delete it and let me go to the right and we have the conditional statement section with the if statement. And as you can see the if is a block used as the function and it needs to be indented in order to have the information inside. So we can say something really simple like number equal input or well, integer is an integer input please provide a number between 5 and 15. And we can say if number is bigger than 5, print that is a valid number. Else, we need to put the block and then indented like the result print that is an invalid number let's just put like bigger than five for now let's start soon and i need to get that out of my watch because now i will interact in so let me just execute my code. So if I provide 6, that is a valid number. If I provide 10, that is a valid number. If I provide 2, that is an invalid. We saw that the flow of the application will be depending the condition statement that we are specifying. As we can see here, depending that logical condition, it's going to do or not to do a specific command and it could be more than one command you can actually specify more things like here always indented that means they're going to be inside the same block of this particular section so now let's actually between 10 and 15 and there's two different ways to do it here we saw one way, probably the, the, the best one. This number bigger than 5. And we can do another validation inside. If number less than 15. Uh, 
fill. Print is that is an invalid number. Something like this. We have an if statement inside another if statement. This is what we're going to do. We're going to validate the first section, let's do an 8. And I'm going to take that 8 and compare it that, and then we'll check if that name, that same number, is less in this case as 15, and then print in that there's a valid number. If we do a bigger number like 55, that is an invalid number, and it's going to be Declare is bigger than 5 but less than 15 until one is printed. Also, we will print number 2 is invalid, is printed in this section from here. We can have nested if statement, but as we saw before, we can actually do some logic. We can do number bigger than 5 and number less. Than 15 we do an 8 a 7 that number is valid if we do a 20 that number is invalid so now we can actually provide different conditions with the AND statement inside with the AND keyword inside the IF statement and this is pretty much how conditional actually works So, in order to use the else if, we can do this number, that is a valid number, and we can do an else if number bigger than 15, and we can do bigger or equal than 15, we can print is invalid because it's bigger than 15 and if the number is less than 5 that's just the else statement you can say it's invalid because it's less than 5 let's try that so if we do a 9, it's a valid number. If we do a 20, it's invalid because, 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 oh my god, sorry for that. There you go. 20, because bigger than 15. And if we do a 3, it's invalid because less than 5. We can have different else if and the good thing about this is you can actually have several number I know that this doesn't complain with this one but just to let you know how that actually work and this should be a um, number less than 20 so we do a 19 it's printing this, but if we do a 22, we print this. There you go. This is how the condition start to work. I hope that you like it. Happy coding, everybody.